So can you really get in shape with only two workouts per week? Well, the answer is yes, but there's a few things you need to know. And in today's video, I'm gonna outline how I stay at about 10% body fat most of the year with only two main workouts per week. But I have to give you a disclosure. There's gonna be some other things that are included in this outline of how to actually only work out twice a week. There's some things you might have needed to do ahead of time or some things you need to do around these two workouts. So today's video, we're gonna break it all down. So let's just jump right into it. What's up everybody, my name is Josiah Novak. I own and I founded a company called The True Transformation. We help men over 40 who wanna be a champion in all areas of life. And fitness has just been lacking for a period of time. Most likely it's due to the fact that you have a busy schedule, you have a lot of social obligations, family responsibilities, and of course, you can't neglect your job or your business in order to get in shape. So over the past 15 years, we've helped well over 10,000 guys master this whole thing called health and fitness. And it all comes down to a system, a system that is built for you around some key principles. And so today's video is gonna break down some of those principles and how they can apply to only training twice a week. If that's the only time that you have, which in my case, I'm a pretty busy guy. I know I do fitness for a living, but there are parts of the year where I can only train twice a week. And that's actually around the summertime because my kids are out of school. I coach sports, we travel a lot, and I'm also training for other things that don't involve the gym. And so I really only get into the gym two or three times a week. So if I had to only train twice a week, this is what I would do. All right, so before we get into things, let me just say this. I have trained five days a week, six days a week. I even trained seven days a week for a period of my life. Uh, and I must say that at the end of the day, in order to build muscle, the really, the number one principle is just you need to get stronger, you need to apply more force to your muscles over time. So you need to get better at doing the movements, some of the movements I'm gonna show you today, in order to build muscle. You gotta surround that with recovery, proper protein intake, caloric intake, rest. So it's not just about two workouts. And I wouldn't lie to you guys and say, oh, you're gonna get ripped just by lifting weights twice a week. There's two other main pillars. There's meals, which is your nutrition, your calories, your protein. I've done a lot of other videos on these things. You can go check them out. But then there's movement, right? It's what you do outside the gym. Because even if you train every day for an hour, you still have, let's call it 23 other hours in the day, some of that sleep, obviously, to actually burn more calories. So when it comes to fat loss, it's really about what you put in your mouth and the movement you do outside the gym. But that being said, you do wanna build a physique that you can be proud of. So today I'm gonna to show you how I would do it and how I do it for parts of the year in order to stay lean, especially in the summer months where that's when we wanna be lean, right? I'm gonna show you what I do and it's really, really simple. So let's just jump right into it. All right, so let's start with what to do outside the gym. Now I'm in the gym, so I apologize for the confusion, but this is just to signify movement, all right? This could be walking outside, this could be riding a bike outside. This could be doing a lot of things outside. But what we do outside the gym on the days we don't train and even on the days we do train is gonna be really, really important. I have a non-negotiable habit that I have in my routine, which is I hit about 10,000 steps per day. Some of that sometimes is on the bike where I'm on the bike for 30 minutes, which equates to about 3,000 steps. But at the end of the day, I wanna stay active. You know, it's not just about lifting weights, you know, cardio matters, but movement matters. A body that's in motion is gonna have more energy, more mental clarity, better food digestion, and you'll burn a lot more calories. So it'll be a lot easier to stay lean. So before we get into the two workouts, I just wanna make sure that every single day you have a movement goal. This can be built into your lifestyle in many different ways. It could include going for a walk with your dogs a couple times a day. It could be going for time outside with the kids, running around, going for a walk with your wife. It could be walking around the office, cutting out a lunch a little early and walking around wherever you are. At the end of the day, this will take practice. So once again, I'm here to give you the real, no nonsense approach. It's gonna take working on your habits. A lot of you right now are just too sedentary. So you're gonna have to set an alarm on your phone and say, hey, every hour I'm gonna get up and walk around for five minutes. Pretty soon, this will become super, super easy. Another tip I would give you is to set aside 30 minutes a day, just 30 minutes. Maybe you're on a phone call, maybe you're watching something, maybe you're reviewing notes. Take that time and walk while you're doing that other thing. So stack your habits on top of one another to improve your life. That's the secret when it comes to managing this whole thing called fitness while being a busy, successful person. So 
I'm on the bike, I'm just warming up for the workout, but this actually goes towards my movement for the day. I did a little bit of walking this morning, so I'm already at 2,000 steps as we start this workout, and my goal today is 10,000 steps, but I'm gonna do one main workout today, and I'm gonna show you some variations because this approach only requires two workouts, but the cool part is the two workouts are basically full body. We're gonna cover most of our body, in fact, pretty much the entire body, but I'm gonna show you some variations of certain exercises. So if you need a little bit of variety for your second workout, you can do a little bit of different things. But we're gonna train full body twice a week. And I'm gonna show you my favorite exercises that have helped me build the most muscle, which in turn leads to looking good, feeling good and performing at my best and staying lean in the process. So finishing up this movement and then we're gonna jump into exercise number one. Most people start with their chest or their shoulders, their push movements. Today we're gonna to start with what I consider to be the most important part of the body. Come over here and I'm gonna show you. We're gonna start with incline bench dumbbell rows for our upper back and just our entire back. We're gonna train a little bit of the bicep too with this movement, but most people start with their chest, which is fine, but the back gets neglected a lot. Uh, and so we wanna train our posterior chain almost twice as much as the front of our body. So we're gonna do one of my favorite row movements, the prone incline bench dumbbell row. Most of our working sets uh, are gonna be in the six to 10 rep range today. Um, your working sets will vary. If you're just starting out, you could just do one or two hard sets per exercise. If you're a little more advanced, it might be three to four, maybe even five. You don't need to necessarily have a ton of different exercises. It's just about making sure you're maximizing the most important exercises, which are the ones where you have the best mind to muscle connection. And you actually feel the muscles you're trying to train working. So uh, let's jump into this first exercise. <clears throat> All right, so we started with a compound movement for our back, upper body, but we're gonna do things a little differently because it's a full body workout today. So we're gonna keep the theme of training all the muscle groups behind us, so in the back or posterior chain. And now we're gonna move into another compound movement called the Romanian deadlift. Now, I know some of you are out there like, oh, I don't wanna throw out my lower back. I don't wanna hurt myself. Don't worry, this is not your standard deadlift. This is a focus on your glutes and your hamstrings a little bit of lower back, but really not a whole lot. So I'm gonna do the dumbbell version because I believe it's the safer version. And all we're gonna do is we're, we can find a wall too if you want. And really to emphasize using the glutes and the hamstrings, you're gonna try to push your glutes, your butt back towards the wall. That's gonna allow your hamstrings to, to lengthen. And then when you're ready, you're just gonna squeeze your butt up, slow and control. You don't have to go heavy to start. If you have a back injury, Take your time on this. You can even do it without any weight just to get the feel for it. Push the butt back, squeeze the butt up. Romanian deadlift. One of the best builders for the butt and the hamstrings. And at the same time, giving a little bit of work to your grip strength, your core, your lower back. Drive back, squeeze, all right. That's exercise number two. So now we've trained our back, our glutes, our hamstrings. Let's start working a little bit of the front of the body. Exercise number three is old school body weight only, push-ups. Now why push-ups? Well, because I'm trying to give you things that you can do anywhere. And if you can't do push-ups yet, hey, let me show you how to start working on your push-up. So the push-up is gonna get our, sh our chest, our shoulders, and our tricep all engaged in the movement, all right? Now, I could easily tell you to do a dumbbell bench press, a machine bench press, and those exercises are great. Probably something you could throw in on day number two if you wanna have some variety. But let's talk about the push-up. So first and foremost, it's a very simple movement. We're just coming down, lightly touching our chest to the ground, driving through our palms, down, drive. Now, if you struggle with the push-up, you can work on the negative, right? So you can start up top, slowly come down, control it, and then rest. And then work your way back up, slowly come down, and rest. You could also start from the bottom. So 
you can almost do the worm as I call it where you're just pushing yourself up and working on the concentric part of the movement which is just the shortening of the muscle all right so that is exercise number three now how many reps should you do and what if you can do a million push-ups great well you can make it harder you could put weight on your back you could do slow negatives, right? To really emphasize, you know, the way down. So you could count to four, one, two, three, four, drive up. One, two, three, four, drive up. Is this gonna build the most muscle if you can do a million push-ups? No. So add some weight, put a weight on your back. You could even do modified one arm push-ups, right? Where you're here and you're working your way down really hard, slow and then push up with two arms, right? And then go to the other side. It's little things like that, making a easy exercise a little more challenging that will result in building muscle. Most importantly though, it's a skill. Getting up off the floor, pushing yourself up off, off the floor is a life necessity. So build these kind of movements into your routine because you can do these anywhere. Anywhere you got a space, you can knock out push-ups. And if once again, they're too easy, set a high goal. Say I'm gonna knock out 200 push-ups and do five sets of 20, um, or excuse me, 10 sets of 20, or five sets of 40, right, if you're super strong. I doubt, because I know I'm not even that strong, I doubt you could be able to knock out crazy amounts of push-ups. After a while, your chest, your triceps, your shoulders are gonna be pretty fatigued. So this is just me giving you a little wrinkle in your workout routine. Let's keep this going. All right, guys, so exercise number four. We're coming back to the back. We did a horizontal row with the incline dumbbells. But I told you, training the back twice as much as our front is something I highly recommend. Helps with better posture, helps actually avoid shoulder pain because your shoulders start to round forward and become compromised over time. So we wanna pull them back. Strong back also looks really good, even from the front. So now we're gonna do a, a vertical pull. Now, there's many different vertical pulls. You can do a lat pull down, you can do a pull up if you're super strong. You could do an underhand pull down. I'm gonna do a machine hammer strength reverse Pull down, okay? Hammer strength machines are amazing. Now, you may not have hammer strength in your gym. You may not have a lot of the cool machines I have access to, so I'm just giving you different options, but at the end of the day, it's the movement itself. So if all you have is a straight cable station, boom. If all you have is a TRX, for example, just do a vertical pull down, pull it down the same exact way, all right? It's all about the movement itself. So let's jump into the hammer strength pull down. So before we go any further, if this video is helpful, smash that like button. Let me know in the comments. How many times a week do you train? Three, four, two, five? Let me know. Maybe on a future video, I'll map out an entire week of workouts. Oh, wait, I already did. <laughs> go check out this video right here. I map out an entire week of training if you wanna see that. Um, that being said, you might be wondering like, what about abs and calves? When do you train those? If you're only training twice a week? well. Couple options, you can do them on your off days. So if you're just at home, you could do some calf raises, some crunches, some reverse crunches, planks, simple stuff. There's a million different ab workouts out there. Or you could do them in between sets in the gym. So while you're resting, you could do, go do some calves, you could go do some abs, and have some active rest in between sets as the workout goes along. Totally your preference, up to you. Um, but we're just trying to be efficient with our time. So whether that's on days you don't train or days you do in between sets. That's when I would recommend training abs and calves. Let's go to the next exercise. Now, full body workouts do require that you go back and forth between upper and lower. You could also just start with upper, finish with lower, vice versa. It's totally your preference. There's really no right or wrong. Um, you could also change what you start with every other workout, right? But I know leg day often gets skipped because it's challenging, it's really hard. The squat is the king of quad exercises, but there's a lot of different ways to squat. And most of the people I've worked with over the years don't really have the shoulder mobility, don't have the ankle mobility necessarily to do a proper heavy barbell squat. So I typically start my personal training clients, but not back when I was a trainer in the gym, with a goblet squat or a machine squat. But today we're gonna do a goblet squat with a kettlebell. You can easily do it with a dumbbell, 
You can easily do it with anything that has weight. A goblet squat is just holding a weight underneath your chin, elbows tucked in, keeping your core braced, your back nice and straight, and dropping into a controlled squat. So here, I'm using the kettlebell. And you can see, I'm gonna sink back on my heels and I'm driving up. Now, goblet squat is very challenging, even though the weight's not on your back, it's in the front. Forces you to really brace your core. So, the one thing I'll tell you is, if you're not comfortable doing a barbell squat, a really cool goal that you could have, if your gym has the weight, is to be able to goblet squat half your body weight for 20 reps. <laughs> so I'm 210, I need about 100 to 105 pound dumbbell or kettlebell, and I need to goblet squat at 20 pounds. I can promise you, it's one of the most challenging targets that you can aim for. But it'll give you something to progress towards as you get stronger and stronger and stronger. Something just to keep in your mind, a little extra challenge, if you will, to kind of build into your routine. If you wanna focus on an exercise for a long period of time, you need to set really challenging goals because otherwise, you'll be looking for the next latest and greatest exercise. And you may not maximize your potential with the ones that you currently have. So just remember that with the goblet squat. And you could also do a barbell squat, machine squat, leg press, anything that really puts all the stress on the quad. So. We're almost done with the workout. Let's wrap it up with some shoulders and arms. Now, I was genetically blessed with pretty good shoulders, um, at least in terms of how they grow, the shape, that kind of stuff, because I trained my shoulders the right way from day one. I was a baseball player, so I did a lot of rotator cuff stuff. I actually had rotator cuff issues, not from training, but from throwing over and over and over again putting a lot of stress on my arm. That being said, I had to really learn how to maximize shoulder development without putting my shoulders at risk of injury. So I will say the king of shoulder exercises, in my opinion, is an overhead shoulder press. So I'll show you that one real quick. But I also wanna show you a really cool way to get shoulder work in and arm work in. So this is an overhead shoulder press. You can do it with a barbell. You do it with dumbbells like I'm doing right now but it allows for the most power and strength to be applied on your shoulders. That being said, the shoulder has got three different heads, right? It's got front delt, side delt, and rear delt. So to really build a well-rounded shoulder, you need to train those other areas. So I like to finish my workouts with side raisers, rear delt raises, and then do some curls and close grip push-ups in a controlled circuit. All right, what does that mean? Well, I'm not rushing through it. It's not for time or speed. I'm not trying to get my heart rate through the roof. What I'm trying to do is go from one to the next in a controlled pace to where I don't lose strength on any of the exercises, but I'm getting a really solid pump and I'm able to still track my weight, make sure I'm getting stronger over time. But it's a nice way to finish if you only got like five minutes and you're like, all right, I'm just gonna set a clock for five minutes, get as many rounds as I can, and I'm done with my workout. So let me show you the circuit. We're gonna start with side dumbbell lateral raises, rear delt bent over flies, then we're gonna do dumbbell curls, and then close grip push-ups, aiming for about eight to 10, eight to 12 on each one. All right, so that wraps up the full body workout. We covered everything. We covered our back, our quads, our glutes, our hamstrings, our arms, our shoulders. And then I showed you or talked to you about how to build in abs and calves. So now what? How do you set this up? Well, I would train two days a week, at least two days in between sessions. And then, like I said in the beginning of the video, make sure you have a non-negotiable movement protocol every single day seven days a week. Start with 10,000 steps a day. That'll be a great place for you to build off of or start to try to achieve. So that's the two day a week workout plan. Yes, you can repeat the same exercises twice a week. I know people are gonna say, oh, you need more variety. No, you don't. You could, sure, you could switch exercises out, 
slight variations. Instead of push-ups, you could do incline dumbbell press. Instead of overhead dumbbell press, you could do barbell overhead press one day. Quads, sure, you could go from goblet squat to a leg press, from a Romanian deadlift to a lying leg curl. If you want more variety, be my guest. What I'm trying to do is give you a simple place to start. And that leads me to my final point. If you're looking for a customized routine, something that is built for you specifically, it's not only gonna help you physically, but help you mentally as well. If you're looking for a holistic game plan that is modified and built for the busy schedule, the family obligations, and deep down inside, you're just not happy with how you feel. You don't feel like you're setting a good example. You're worried because you're lacking energy and your health is starting to deteriorate. If that's you, don't worry. I've worked with thousands of guys just like that. And all it comes down to is having a system and we can start having a system for you right away. There's a couple links in the description of this video, one of which is our 3M system. You can download it for free, but you can also schedule a consultation with me and my team. And we can figure out if you need our help or if you don't. Either way, we'll point you in the right direction. So your next step from here is, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that. But then number two, go to the link in the description of the video or in the first comment. It's real easy, follow the steps on the page and we will take great care of you. Even if it's just getting our free stuff and starting to implement it right away. My, my name is Josiah Novak the true transformation.com life moves fast make it count peace